After we've prepared ourselves for the lesson, everyone will already have this picture in the sketch layer, together with the colour swatches here. We'll start by adding some texture to the canvas. Add a new layer and rename it to paper. Change the blend mode of the paper layer to linear burn. Choose the dark grey colour. Now, choose your paper brush. There are a total of 11 brushes to choose from. You can choose any of them. For me personally, I like brush number 2 the most. I'll use this brush number 2. Increase the size of the brush to the maximum and paint it all over the canvas. If you zoom in, you'll see the simple paper texture. Or you want it darker. You can duplicate the paper layer if you think that the paper's colour is too light. Let's start with the skin colour. Add a layer and rename the layer to skin. I'll move the skin layer and put it under the sketch layer. Then, I'll choose this orangish nude colour, the first one here. The brush we'll be using is in the wet marker set. Number 15 is the one that I use pretty often, and it's quite comfortable to use if we want a soft, not too dark finish. For the size, I'll use just around 5-6%. to That should be enough. You'll get something like this, which is a perfect size for the face. We won't paint the whole face just like that. Using a marker is not just to fill the colour in the area, but it's to slowly build the colour until it's darker. I'll start from the forehead area. Gently paint like you're just rubbing it. Don't paint in the same place too much. If you're checking the original picture, you'll see that the light is hitting the forehead. There's a bit of colour between the eyebrows. I'll leave the middle of the forehead as it is for now. The side of the forehead that's connecting to the hair should be a little bit dark. You can paint over the same place with the marker brush. Check the original picture as well. Slowly add more colour to areas that the light doesn't hit directly. Slowly building the colour up. This is the shape of the cheekbones. Paint straight from the cheeks down to the chin. The neck should have some colour, but the colour under the chin should be a little darker. Paint lightly, don't overdo it. Next, we'll use the same colour, but reduce the brush size. Around 2-3% should be enough. Then. Use it to create the shadow under the eyebrow here. You'll see from the original picture that the colour is quite dark here. Try to check for the shadowed areas from the original picture.
paint beside the nose a little, not too much. Don't be impatient and just put dark colour. We have to slowly build up the colour. We can use the brush diagonally like this. It'll be a perfect fit for this gap. Because if we paint like we usually do, the colour might go beyond the area that we want. As I said, I've designed the brush in a way that the colour follows the direction of the pen. You may be confused at the beginning, but if you keep using it, you'll feel more comfortable. For the corner of this eye, I paint diagonally like this. If you see the area where the colour should be dark, paint it. Paint under the glasses as well. The nose bridge as well. Leave the centre of the nose where the light is supposed to hit. Paint this part diagonally. The brush will be at a perfect angle for this part. We now have the nose's shadow. Paint the chin as well, the area under the lips. Position the brush horizontally. OK. A little here at the corners of the lips. Go over the cheekbones again a little. Go over the neck, under the chin, and a little on the side of the face again. Okay, this is just the first layer and it's starting to come together. We still have the abdomen to paint. You can increase the brush size to about 10%. You can just paint like this. Then reduce the brush size. Add the colour to the area that is supposed to be dark. There's this part that is the abdominal muscles. A little shadow from the top. Increase the brush size a little and paint over here again just a bit. Okay, now we have the abdomen. Don't forget that we also have fingers to paint. Reduce the brush size. For the fingers, we won't be very detailed with them. 
we'll just create some shadows from the sleeve. We won't make it very realistic. The part of the fingers that are holding the bag should be a little dark. Okay, let's make another hand too. We'll paint this colour on the part that doesn't get hit directly by the light. If you see a really bright part, you can skip it. You can position your brush diagonally. I'll emphasize just the convex parts. Now, we have the fingers and the first layer of skin colour. I think this part should be a little lighter. I'll fix it. I'll fix it by going to the eraser and choosing the same brush that I used for colouring. The reason I choose the same brush is that I want it to look smooth. Okay, that's enough. Now, I want to do a little detailing for the first skin colour layer. I'll use the Freya Wet Marker Brush, number 5, which has a pointy tip and is good for detailing. I'll use it to add shadows under the eyes, the small areas here. The eye creases. A little on the corners of the mouth. Okay, not too much. Next, let's clean up the messy parts. The eraser brush that we'll use is the Freya Wet Marker 15 brush. Clean up your work from time to time while painting. Erase the messy colour around the edges. Okay, for the next step, we'll be painting the second skin layer. For the second skin layer, if you have an iPad, a top model one, you'll be able to add many layers, 
and I recommend you to add a new layer. If you have a regular iPad with limited space, you don't have to add a new layer. You can paint in the same layer. As for me, I'll add a new layer. Choose the Freya Wet Marker 15 brush. Choose the orangish brown colour. The colour may look a little dark, but when we're really using it, it won't be that dark because we'll paint lightly and we'll slowly build the shade up. The size of the brush will be quite small. Observe the original picture to search for areas that are supposed to be really dark. The obvious parts would be the eyebrows, under the eyebrows, and the eye creases. I'll just paint over that part with this colour by positioning my brush diagonally like this. If we paint diagonally like this, it'll fit perfectly around the corners. Try it! Let's start with the eyebrows. We'll have to make the eyebrows dark anyways. You'll notice that I'm not applying a lot of hand pressure. Under the hair, around the hairline, or wherever that is supposed to be dark, paint with this colour. Around next to the cheekbones as well. For the cheekbones, if you like putting on makeup, you'll know where to contour. Paint this part like you're contouring your face. Adjust the brush size to around 2 to 3 percent and paint gently. Slowly build the colour up. Don't paint firmly like this to make it dark. Paint slowly and gently, little by little. This is enough to make it obvious. A little under the glasses here. Do you notice that it has more dimension now? Under the lips a little. Under the nose as well. Then the neck, the obvious shadowed part. Let's do that again. I'll position my brush diagonally like this. I won't paint like this. I'll do this instead. We can learn how to control the brush together. Place it diagonally and slowly paint. Drag your brush and slowly tilt it like this. Tilt the end of the brush this way. Then flick it up like this. I'll show you how to do that again in this area. Paint downward and slowly tilt the brush to the left, then Flick the brush upward. You'll get a shape like this that fits the shadow under the neck perfectly. This is how you use a flat tip brush. 
You can blend here a little to make it smoother. A little here as well. Okay, we now have fairly clear light and shadow for the skin color. I'll change my brush to the Freya Wet Marker 5 that has a pointy tip. I'll use it to add a little shadow next to the nose here to make the bridge of the nose sharper. Paint lightly. Add some here as well. Use a little smaller brush. What do you think? The nose has dimension now. A little more here at the corner of the mouth. All right, let's move on to the fingers and the abdomen. I'll go back to the Freya Wet Marker 15 brush as usual. First, the abdomen. Emphasize under the top where it is shadowed. I'll position my brush horizontally like this. Do you see that it looks like a real shadow of the top? There's this part as well that is the shadow of the coat. And there are also the abdominal muscles here. Don't paint too much on this part. You'll see a small line here. Now we've just got the abdomen. Don't forget the fingers. This is like we're painting on the same part that we did in the previous layer. Not too much though, just emphasize it a bit. For the skin creases here, I'll just paint non-uniform horizontal lines to make them look like creases of the finger's skin. Okay, we've finished the skin. I'll go back to the Freya Wet Marker 5 brush just to add a little more details on the face. Now, you can check if you want to add anything else. There's this part at the inner corner of the eyes as well. This is preparation because we'll be painting the hair, makeup, and eyes in the next lesson.
check if you see anywhere else that should be a shadowed area. Next, let's clean up the mess. Erase the messy parts. Okay, we've now finished painting both layers for the skin. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like or leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. As a thank you, loyal subscribers receive a 10% discount on my Better Marker mini course. Check the description for coupon code. See you in the next video.